Hey everybody, welcome to Samudra Shakti Online. We are live here on Zoom and uh, we've got a great gathering tonight. We're also uh, live here on Facebook. So if you're here on Facebook with us, be sure to roll out your mat. We have a great practice tonight. Uh, my name is Lisa Long and I am a teacher in Jacksonville, Florida. And I am super excited that you are with us. But tonight I just wanted to introduce you to Madhuri Martin, who'll be leading our practice and get us off the ground fast. So Madhuri started her yoga journey in 1986 and she began by studying Ashtanga yoga with Richard Freeman and then K. Patabi Joyce in Mysore, India. While he was teaching a Iyengar workshop at Richard's studio in 1990, she met John Friend. It wasn't until 1997 that Madhuri became a serious student of Anasara, traveling and apprenticing and assisting John for the next seven years. Thinking back, she finds it the most magical, exhilarating, fun, transformative, demanding, and exhausting time of her life. In 1999, Madhuri began her studies with the brilliant author, master of eloquence and storytelling, Martine Prechtel, one of the nation's foremost teachers of indigenous culture, including their artistic and spiritual traditions, stories, and mythologies, going back thousands of years. Martine has guided Madhuri's passion for authenticity, spiritual nobility, and legitimacy through the historical and geographical diversity of indigenous perspective, cultures, and peoples, past and present. With a glimpse into that tapestry of human tradition, Madhuri strives to articulate Anasara Yoga's radical postural insights and revival of non-dual tantric philosophy as one of the great gifts of our contemporary culture. So I'm gonna stop the screen share and hand this over to Madhuri. Hello everybody and welcome. Tonight's subject is, uh, in tonight's subject, we're going to wrestle with and answer the question, how do we invoke our practice? Last month, um, Judith Hill did an amazing, incredible one hour presentation on the invocation. The invocation being such a fundamental place where we start and all come together with Anyasara. So we said, okay, how do we invoke our practice? We'll start by looking at the word invoke. Invoke means to call on or to summon. And really the most interesting definition of evoke for us tonight is to invoke something is to cause something to be carried out, to cause something to happen. Tonight in this hour we have together, I really want to cause something to happen. I want us all to be successful in creating a thing. So in order for us to do that, I need help. Like I can't do it alone. So I have asked my dear, dear, dear friend and fellow Anyasara student and teacher, Jay Martin to come and join us. Yeah, you just sit here for, um, uh, for this particular practice and lecture on invoking Anyasara practice. Say hi to Jay. <laughs> um, In Anyasara, we're taught that the, how we know these teachings is, to, is by embodying them. We have to embody the teachings to know them. We have to embody the philosophy to understand the philosophy. And we have to embody this lifestyle to understand what it's like to be a yogi. Jay is probably from the entire Anyasara firmament the most embodied Anyasara practitioner and teacher and that I know. So I'm exceedingly, exceedingly happy to have Jay come and demonstrate to us how is it that we go about invoking practice. So thank you so much, Jay. I'm going to have Jay um, set himself up on the mat near the altar and I will be out of the picture. 
while he demonstrates. We'll start with sitting. So before we begin, we want to discern what are the elements of invoking our asana practice? Our invocation starts with the word or the sound om. To start our invocation, the sound om is considered like the dawn of the creator's emptiness. When there was emptiness, before there was manifestation, there was the sound and the sound was om. This is a reoccurring theme in many, many mythologies and many origination myths across the planet, around the planet and throughout time. So this sacred sound as a thing that comes and brings from nothing into something, into creation, into manifestation. The process of invocation is encapsulated in the sound om. So we can start with the sound om as a way to understand the requirement of invoking our practice. Om is popularly uh, divided up into three sounds. The A or A ah, is the creative impulse, that longing to create. The U or U is the task of maintenance. So it's like this thing of when we long to create is this thing is like, you gotta wanna, you gotta wanna create. And then when it comes to the um part, the task of maintenance, whatever it is we've created, we have to maintain that. And so that's the like, you really gotta wanna, right? You gotta stick with it. And then the M or the M sound is the permission for whatever we created to dissolve, to move back into silence as a gift back to the divine. So we're going to explore this now with your own and our chant. Please take a comfortable seat. And join Jay and I for one ohm. Three ohm. <laughs> Um, and, and uh, reciting our, our chant one time and then ending with an om just for time's sake tonight. Take a deep a breath in, bring your hands together in front of your heart. Inhale. Oh. Ananda Murtaye Nish Prapanchaya Shantaya Nira Lambaya Tejase So we're going to start um, with the eyes closed, if we can, for a moment, and look at this concept of intention versus attention. Today, we're going to intend, I have a problem. Um, we're going to, uh, we're going to drop our usual process of going into intention and move to a process of attention. So attending to 
this question, what is it to invoke a practice? We want to attend to something that is immediate and right with us right now. So instead of in trying, trying to persuade or perhaps move in something in the future, we're going to do the very difficult thing of intending something to happen this moment. So with that, we'll start with our seat and our seated position. In the seating posture, first we'll uh, create, create the posture by engaging all the muscles into the core of who you are. Draw from the legs, draw from the arms and engage. When we engage, we feel a brightness in our posture. Maintain that. And then we'll do a simple inner spiral. The legs on the right, move from the middle of the thigh and into the upper part of the pelvis as an inner spiral. And then on the left, move the inner thigh and upper pelvis and then Hold that, maintain that. Next, we'll create um, a slight extension of the tailbone down. Allow the tailbone to grow and descend. Maintain that. And then we'll start to create a pathway for the Shishumna Nadi. So we want the flow of our practice to be unobstructed. And so we'll want the Shumna Nadi to be unobstructed. How we do that, usually the inner spiral brings us a little bit forward in our posture. So for right now, start to rock a little forward and a little bit back with your eyes closed and see if you can Soften the pendulum of that rocking back and forth until you feel the energy of the Shishumna Nadi, the light of the Shishumna Nadi. It's usually back further than we're, than we're used to. So you want to go a little bit back and then it may feel like you're a little off balance to the back of your posture but the Shishumna Nadi will feel unobstructed and open like a conduit receiving and giving this light of prana. Maintain that. And then finally, we'll begin to extend back out from the core, out the legs, up through the spine and out through the arms reach that light out again. It's almost as if you're in a coronation ceremony. You're about to be crowned a prince or a queen. And the ceremony is going on a little bit too long. So you're getting impatient. So you reach the crown of the head, reach the head towards that invisible crown from the divine. Maintain that. <laughs> so somebody has their, it is unmuted. You can board. please Sorry. mute yourself. Okay, thank you. Um, so, and then from here, Bring the hands together in front of the heart. So we've just demonstrated how to ohm your practice. You got to ohm it, right? It's you go through all the creation, the maintenance, the creation, the maintenance, the next layer of creation and maintenance. Ohm your practice. 
And then from there, we simply allow the practice or the pose that we just created to dissolve, dissolve back into the mat as we take a humble bow to our hands and then move into standing in front of your sticky mats. So we'll, re we'll recreate this again and again in our pose. <clears throat> to start with this invoking of the practice, I could, we could choose any word, any concept, even any syllable from our chant and carry that all the way into one rabbit hole way of invoking our practice. Today, I've decided to use the word tejase. We're going to use the word tejase mostly because Judith Hill, she used to say to me, she used to say, Missouri, Missouri, can you sing the tejase song? She didn't know like what the chant was called. So she's like, I love the tejase song. Can you say it? Tejase say is the light or radiance. And she used to call her chant the tejase song. And the truth of the matter is Judith is right. It is the tejase song. So we're going to invoke our practice by learning how to become radiant. We're going to evoke our practice by doing the work of becoming luminous. So what is that work? We start with prana. Bring the hands together in front of the heart. Draw from the fingers and the toes into the core of your being. Take a deep inhale and a full exhale as the hands come down to the side. Inhale, lift your arms as if you're swimming through honey so that the fingers and the toes feel this resistance. Gaze up towards the thumbs and then exhale, bring the hands down to the side. That light might be intense for you, Jay, sorry. Inhale again, let the hands follow the inhalation. So we start with the inhalation. The arms demonstrate to the outer world what it's like, the rhythm and the pattern of inhalation. Exhaling, allow the hands to come down to the side. Draw into, from your toes, from your fingers, all the way into the pelvis. Inhale one more time, bring the arms up overhead. Pull into the pelvis as if you're a sun, pulling into the very core of your body. And then exhale, we'll fold forward. Inhale, extend through the front of your spine. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhaling, fold. Inhaling with either your legs bent or straight, you're going to come all the way up again to standing with the arms up overhead, swimming through the thickness like you're swimming through ghee. Exhaling, bring the hands down to the side. Fold the hands together in front of the heart and feel the potency of this pranic weight. Prana is energy. Prana is life force. We're bringing more of that life and light into our, into our practice. And in our practice today, particularly concentrating on giving us per ourselves permission to increase the flow, to increase the light. Exhaling, bring the hands down to the side. Inhaling again, reach the arms up overhead. Again, as if you're swimming through honey, exhaling, fold forward. Some of you may have your legs bent. Some of you may have blocks under your fingers. Whatever you have to do to extend the spine long in such a way, Ardha Uttanasana, where you can feel the, uh, the, the Shishumna Nadi unobstructed front and back 
flowing. And then exhale, keep that flow of the Shichunya Nadi as you fold. With either your legs bent or straight, root into the foundation of your feet and inhale, come all the way up, following your breath, swimming through the thickness to come to standing. Exhale, bring the hands down to the side. overhead one more time. Give yourself permission as you exhale and fold forward to increase your prana. Feel the, the, the current moving through your body. Inhale, reach the crown of the head forward. Exhale, step the right foot back into lunge. For two breaths here, pulse. Draw from the fingers and toes into the pelvic floor. Allow the pelvic floor to get condensed with radiance. And then with that radiance, shine it back out through the back leg, through the front leg, while you bring the skin on the outer left thigh slightly back and reach again through the Shishunya Nadi. Step the right foot forward and the left foot back. Bend the front knee into a square, activate the back leg, draw from the toes and fingers all the way into the pelvis. From the pelvis again, reach back out. So every, every instruction we create, like inner spiral, the back leg up. Take the skin on the outer right thigh and move it slightly back towards your left heel. And then maintain that as you pulse and radiate back out through this pose. Exhale completely. Inhale, step the left foot forward. Inhale, extend through the front of the spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Step the right foot back. Maintain all of those aspects that we explored during the first lunge as you inhale and bring yourself to a lifted lunge. Reach the torso up and the arms up overhead. For two breaths, draw into the pelvic floor and then exhale, reach back strongly through the back leg and through the front leg. Now we have a tendency to curve the Shishumna Nadi in this pose. So we're gonna activate our kidney loop to pull the back part of the body back. We'll activate the skull loop and shoulder loop so that we feel the flow of prana unobstructed through the body in this pose. You become a conduit. Let that be super light, super radiant. Exhaling, bring the hands down on either side of the front foot and switch feet. Left foot back, right foot forward. Engage the legs, root through the feet. Inhale, lift your lunge. Inner spiral the back leg. Maintain that. Pull the skin on the outer right thigh towards your left heel. Maintain that. Move the kidney loop back and up so that we start to move ourselves more and more into the back body and then receive. Receive the light into the core of your pelvis. From the core of your pelvis, reach back out in all directions. Exhaling, come on down. Step the right foot back, come into a full plank position. Exhaling, pull all the way down to the floor. Inhaling, a little cobra pose. With this cobra pose, slightly pull the heels of the hands back so you can curl through the shoulders and ex extend more light into the heart. Exhale, release down. 
Curl the toes, step back into downward dog pose. Take a few breaths here from dark. We create form. From form, we organize into being. From being, we refine into beauty. From beauty, what we've created travels through silence as a gift back to the other side. We wave goodbye to what we have created without clinging. We allow it to dissolve into the dark. Walk the feet forward. We repeat this process in every pose. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Om your pose. Inhaling, come all the way up into standing. Exhale, bring the hands down in front of the heart. Close your eyes. Tejase has two salient qualities. One is light that we've just been exploring. Can you feel the light in your body? Can you feel the light engendering, starting to move? The other salient quality is joy. So your task now is to maintain this flow of light, this play of light force and life force in your body as we move into a practice that also invites in joy. Exhale, bring the hands down to the sides. Inhale, reach the arms up overhead. Exhaling, fold forward. Inhale, extend through the spine long, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step the right foot back into a lunge. So how do we increase joy? in our practice by increasing our body's ability to be fluid and strong, by increasing our body's ability to, our mind's ability to be fluid and strong. Um, <clears throat> from here, let the, bring the left hand on the inside edge of the left leg and yes, <laughs> and bring the right hand onto your hip. You can allow the left, uh, the right heel to come down towards the floor and then just open into a simple twist. Bring the right arm up overhead. Just, yeah, twist towards, yes. So open up into this, just a simple twisting pose. Inhale, draw in and exhale, extend. Let the right arm reach. Let yourself accept the radiance and give it back. One more breath in. Exhale, bring the right hand down and the hands on either side of the front foot. From here, jump switch. So move into light, move into our dynamic posture. Bring the right hand on the inside edge of the right leg, left arm up towards the ceiling and a simple twist. You can bring your left, hand, left heel down towards the floor. A simple twist, inhaling, draw in, exhaling, open, open in this pose. Beautiful. And then exhaling, we'll bring the left hand down, right hand on the outside edge of the right foot. And from here, jump switch. However that works for you, for some of us, we can jump switch high as for some of us, it's a new, it's a new movement, it's a new process, but just have fun with it. Jump switch again. <laughs> Beautiful, inhaling, come on in and laugh and play with it. It's fun to be able to jump switch, jump switch again. Wonderful, that's the way to do it. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> So from here now, um, uh, actually, we key jump switch one more time. Sorry about that. I want it, Jay, facing you. So right foot forward, left foot back. Bring the left heel all the way down to the floor and come into Trikonasana. You'll straighten the right leg 
and open up into triangle pose. A couple of breaths here. Work the inner spiral on your back leg. Scoop the skin of the right buttock back towards your tail. And then as much as you can, fill the back body. Fill the back body with presence and form. And then allow the head to line up with the Shishumna Nadi. Extend into and extend out of this pose you've just created. Look down at the right foot and then come into Trikonasana. I mean, excuse me, Ardha Chandra Chandra Chandrasana. Ardha Chandrasana. There you go. So another way to bring joy into our practice is to balance to these funky things on one leg. We keep all, we maintain everything that we brought into this practice, into the last pose, and we bring it into Ardha Chandrasana. Beautiful. Another way we create joy, slowly bend the right knee and float your back foot back to Trikonasana. See how smoothly and seamlessly you can do that transition. Draw from the feet all the way into the core of the pelvis, shine back out through the legs, inhale, let the left arm pull you up out of this pose. Exhale, turn to the second side. Left toes go out, right heel drops back. Exhale, bring the left hand down to the outside of the left foot. Trikonasana. Many of you may be bending your knee in this pose. Some of you may have a block underneath your hand. However you need to adjust in order to feel that seamless flow of energy, please feel like you can adjust. Invite the light in, reach the light back out. One more breath of pulsing in this way. And then exhale, look down at your left foot, bend the left knee, come into Ardha Chandrasana. We, it's fun to fly. It's joyful to fly. It's, this is such one of my favorite poses. The half moon feels like flying. So much of the stability is coming from our lifted leg, but without going into the details of the pose, enjoy the flight. Take a, key, a deep breath in, fully extend through all the, the crown of the head, the long spine, your arms and legs, and then exhale, we'll look down at the left hand, slowly bend the left knee, and gracefully come back into triangle pose. Inhaling, come on up. Beautiful. And we'll turn to the first side again. Right toes out, left heel drops back. And this time we're gonna rotate the pelvis all the way around to the right side. So you're gonna shorten your stance a little, bring the left toes in even more. And we'll go to Parjvottanasana. First, bring the hands onto the hips. Inner spiral your back leg. Bring a little bit of skin down the back of the right buttock. And with that power, increase our ability to draw back into the kidney area through the spine. Keep the Shishumna Nadi unobstructed as you exhale, fold forward. Again, many of you may have your knee bent in this pose. Inhale again. Exhale, bring the hands down to the floor or a block. If your knee is bent, your hands are on a block, that's fine. What we want to feel is the ability for us to be a conduit for this light and for this joy. So draw in, feel the strength of the right leg and then rock forward onto the right leg, bending the right knee, come with both hands in front, about a foot in front of the right foot and lift the left leg up off the floor, balancing on the right leg, straighten the right leg, if you can, some of you may choose to keep the right leg bent. Then take the right hand onto the right hip if that's possible for you. If it's possible for you, go all the way into this twist. Allow the right arm, uh, the right shoulder to come onto the back. Keep the inner, upper inner thigh of the left leg lifting as you let the right arm move all the way towards the ceiling. So open up into 
Paravrita Ardha Chandrasana. Inhaling, draw into this pose, even though it seems a little edgy, we're literally enjoying the fact that we can balance. The fact that we can be in this position in our bodies is a great, great honor. Exhaling, bring the right hand down, keep the left leg lifted, and then slowly we'll move back into Parshvottanasana. Bend the right knee, float the back leg down to the floor, hands on either side of the front foot, Ardha Parshvottanasana, bring the, arm, the sp spine up, and then then from here, come all the way up into standing, ground down through the feet, lift up into standing, and then turn to the second side. Maintain all of that as we lift the arms up overhead. Everything we learned from the last pose, we're here to recreate and create the next pose, exhaling, fold forward. Invite in the tejas, invite in the light. Inhale, Arda, yeah, extend through the front of the spine. Inner spiral your back leg. Send the, the um, skin on the outer left hip back, keeping that and keeping the, the shishumna nadi alive and awake. Exhale, fold. From here, we'll look up, bend the left knee, place the hands a little bit in front, about a foot in front of the feet, and come on into balancing on the left foot and the, two, and the fingertips. Play with this pose. Many of you may have the knee bent. May have, many of you may have a block under your, left, your hand, whatever you need to be comfortable. Bring the left hand onto the hip, whatever you need to be successful, to feel like I got this. I'm owning this pose. I got Move into whatever force you'll take. Let the left arm come up towards the ceiling if that's possible for you. And then breathe, hold this pose, pulse with this pose. Feel the elation of your ability to fly, of your ability to balance. Balancing and standing and moving seamlessly with fluidity, it's fun. It's really fun. Allow, bring the left hand down to the floor and then slowly we'll float the right foot back to Parjvottanasana. Inhaling, bring the hands onto your hips. Lift up, up out of the pose and come to standing. Jump to standing in the middle of your sticky mat. Bring the hands together there in front of the heart. Bend your knees. I am sorry, don't bend your knees. But keep your eyes open so you can see the expression on Jay's face. <laughs> it is so full of joy and radiance and light. Exhaling. Come on down to sitting. So we'll assume a sitting posture with the legs spread out wide to the sides. So what I'd like to do here for a moment is address that question, the unspoken question. You're like, yeah, but Maduri, there are times when I cannot pull this out. I can't pull this forward. There are times when I'm faced when I'm like not in with my community and I'm not in the Anyasara conversation and things are not going well in my life. Has anyone ever had that experience? It's hard to be radiant. It's hard to be luminous. It's hard to be joyful. What do we do then? Well, my response is, believe me, I know. <laughs> life sometimes is really hard and it sends us some stuff we did not expect. And it's a very difficult thing. So how do we invoke our practice then? What do we do then? I'm going to have Jay lead you through Parva Uttavishakanasana, uh, uh, excuse me. 
Um, so I want you to do like five breaths to the right, five breaths to the left, and then Uptavisha Kanasana, five breaths in the middle. So Jay will like show you the rhythm and the pace of this pose. You just follow him while I'm addressing this unspoken question. Inner spiral, the right leg and the left leg, beautiful. Inhaling, draw from the, the legs all the way up into the pelvis, and then exhale, begin your twist. Some of you may want to bend a knee. Some of you may, whatever you need to do to get comfortable so that the torso feels expanded and able to twist. And then Jay will just pulse this pose for five breaths. The opposite of joy is misery. And in misery, we're afflicted. We experience distress and torment and despair and dejection. And we have to ask ourselves, how much are the circumstances of my life demanding this be my response? We have to ask ourselves, how much is this self-imposed? How much insight do we have to the fact that a portion of this melancholy, of this difficulty is our choice? We are consciously choosing this. Inhaling, come on up, turn to the second side. Exhale, follow J and pulse your pose. So we have to ask ourselves, can I choose something else? Maybe, maybe not, and that's okay. But if not, can we recognize the divine in this experience? Can we recognize the, this, the divine in a subdued form? And when we're sad, when things aren't going right and we're distressed, it's difficult for us to experience the divine in this form. Can we choose to perceive the divine even in a time that's sad or heavy? Inhaling, come on up. Exhaling, we'll take our pose straight to the middle. Uttavisha Kanasana, fold forward. And for some of you, you may have your knees bent. You may not get your chest down to the floor or your forehead to the floor in the way that Jay can, but do your pose with your radiance, with your joy. What we have to do is open ourselves up to the fact that all of our emotions, the entire spectrum is too divine. Can we open ourselves up to that? Maybe, and maybe not. But can we try? Inhaling, come on up. Exhaling, draw the legs together. Bring the hands on the outside of the legs. Bend your knees, draw them together. And then come on down to lying down on your back. So our first pose, we'll do Supta Padangustasana. Bend the right knee. Hold on to the right foot with both hands and just invite, uh, we're doing Supta Padangustasana with the knee bent. So we'll invite the knee into the right armpit. The hands go on either side of the leg. Good. And in this pose, you'll want to, again, regain our ability to radiate, to invite in flow. Because when we invite in flow, radiance, luminosity, it's easier for us to recognize the divine. Let the foot press into the hand as much as the hands are pulling down on the foot. And to the extent that you can, 
bring the knee towards the right armpit. Pulse this pose for a few breaths. So we looked at the, what's the opposite of joy, which is sadness and misery. The opposite of light, the other aspect of Tejase is dark. Exhaling, release the right foot. Inhaling, switch sides, bend the left knee. Bring the hands to the top of the foot. Extend from the pelvic floor out through the leg and then exhale, invite the knee down towards the left armpit. So dark can be described with words such as dingy or dusky or shady, right? Dark can also be described with the word mysterious, hidden, secret what we in Anyasara will call concealed. We know that when something is veiled or obscure, it doesn't mean that what we're experiencing is not divine. So we invite ourselves to go on the cosmic Easter egg hunt. Exhale, release your leg and allow the leg to come down to the floor. Beautiful. Bend the right knee. Place the right knee on the top of the left thigh. Um, move the hip a little bit to the right, sorry, and bring the arms out to the side. We'll do a simple twist here. Allow the left knee to come to the right. Oops, excuse me, right knee to come to the left. My apologies for a simple twist. So if there is a mystery and it's hard to see the divine, we engage as a sleuth. We try to figure it out. We arrive at our practice, at our pose, at our situation in our life with tremendous humility and tremendous curiosity. We can ask, what is happening here? What is concealed? Where is the divine? Inhaling, come on up. Exhaling, switch sides. Allow the right foot to go down. Left hand on the top, left foot on the top of the left thigh. And twist to the right. From this twist, can we invite in? We're supported by the earth. How fun is that? We're supported by this generous mother all the time. Just that thought may be able to pull us out of our melancholy. We can invite in from the fingers and toes this pranic light and stream it, flood it, flow it through the body. And we feel this crazy spiraling of the spine up and animating our spine and our posture and our body. And sometimes these little thoughts are enough to bring us into a place where we can invoke practice and discover the divine. Inhaling, lift the left knee. Exhaling, release the left foot down and prepare for Shavasana. We have come to the final Om. In Shavasana, we can release. Release any tension or holding. Release the arms and the legs. Allow yourself to be weighty, held, by our glorious Mother Earth. You just snuggle into her.
allow the prana again to start to animate your body. Let the fingers move and the toes move from the prana spreading through your body, from the light force, from the life force. Draw your knees in towards your chest. Roll to the left side and come up to sitting. Take a comfortable seat. Find your presence, close your eyes, notice the effect that that short, simple practice had on our heart. My friend Judith, she says that in our best, we are just simply efficient recycling centers. Our prana is a process of receiving a divine gift and then recycling the divine right back into the divine. Our thoughts are a process of receiving divine gifts and then recycling the divine back into the divine. Our emotional states, they're a process there we're receiving divine gifts. Can we recycle them from the divine back into the divine. Our actions are a process of receiving divine gifts. Can our actions recycle that gift back to the divine? Slowly open your eye. Thank you all for coming to this practice. I was reminded yesterday by my daughter Satya, we were having this very long conversation. Ours are usually about two to four hours long and they're wonderful. And she was saying at the end of the conversation, she goes, you know what, mom? Thriving is a devotional act. <laughs> and it's true, right? So we want to be, a, to be in a place where we can thrive. Maduri and Jay, we're getting a lot of beautiful comments in the chat box. Um, so wonderful. Um, lots of Tejas uh, coming at you. I hope you guys both have time to read the chat. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for this invoking the practice practice. I hope we you had some elements in there. You're like, oh, yeah, you know, oh, yeah, I can do that in my practice and do that. And we really, the point I think to me is that we want to be in the place of presence of we are in a process of invocation with our practice all the time. Like it's, it's not, you know, it's like it's, it's good to remind us of the depth of what we're doing and how fully we can do it. So I hope there's a few little hints on how to do that for your own practice and in your own teaching. Thank you everybody thank and you thank you, Jay.